I think I get the hint with this Phalaenopsis no ID. We call her Alexandra. She was doing beautifully in Lava Rock many years ago. And seeing as I like to have everything uniform, I put all my Phalaenopsis complex hybrids into Lekka and self-watering. I have a feeling that was a mistake because many years later she has never recovered. She has been slowly but surely expressing her displeasure on that move. Now, this orchid normally I would insist upon, I would get it right, she needs staking anyway, so that's what we're going to do in this video as well. I would insist that she would stay in Lekka and self-watering because again, I like uniformity. However, <clears throat> this is not my orchid <laughs> and I wanna do right by her, except the fact that Lekka is not for every orchid and switch her back into lava rock. But as is the norm in the orchid hobby, I am not entirely sure that it was only the Lekka and self-watering that was the issue because things have changed since 2019 when I potted her into Lekka. <laughs> oh well, let's get her out and let's get her into lava rock. Let me just qualify what I just said about the changes. You see, she was growing so well in lava rock, but she also had artificial lighting and heat mats for the first two years while she was in lava rock. When I switched her to Lekka, turns out that I am not using artificial lighting anymore and I'm not using heat mats anymore. So without being 100% sure that Lekka was a failure, it doesn't matter. Lekka has evaporative cooling and my experience with her is she was happy in lava rock. I'm putting her back into lava rock, but also in self-watering. So I'm going to do a little bit of a compromise with her and I hope she forgives me and then returns to what her capabilities are because wow, she can bloom amazing spikes given the right conditions. And it's good to have you here. I appreciate that you clicked on the video and that you stayed. Now I have been soaking her in hoo -hoo, 800 parts per million of fertilized water. Normally I do cow mag and seaweed, etc. That was not on the menu for all my other Phalaenopsis today. I went a little bit overboard with the teaspoon. <laughs> Oops, it was a little bit too heaped with the fertilizer. So it was 800 for them today and I figured today is the day. She needs staking anyway, and she has one single active root tip, which I'm going to take advantage of. Just waiting to see some movement from her. So I like to protect the root tips, if I had plural, but we'll make sure we protect the singular root tip and pour the leka out in the opposite direction and see how unhappy she was. Oh my goodness, girl, I am so, so sorry. This orchid, I would say, either hated Lekka totally or she cannot cope with the lack of light during the winter. We're gonna find out, like I said, back into lava rock she goes. Oh dear, Chica, I am so, so sorry. I've got you. Oh, and we're gonna deal with some scale as well. Ooh, and my hands. Oh goody, they were not alive. <laughs> awesome. Now it's not like when I took her out of the lava rock that she had the most amazing root system ever. I have a couple of Phalaenopsis that are super stingy when it comes to root growth. Alexandra being one of them, Bubba being the other, both named after my daughter and the love language that I speak to her. <laughs> Turns out, coincidentally or not, <laughs> that both do not like to grow nice roots. But anyway, at least they can grow better than what I've got going on here right now. So we'll give this a good little clean up. Oh dear, that's not dead. It looks like it, but it's not. It's firm, so we'll leave that. Don't want to go too mad. Just a little bit of, you know, a bit of a tidy, let's just say. Oh boy, do I have my work cut out for me when it comes to cleaning media. The media is clean. It's waiting in its XXL size pot to be boiled, but I still have many more projects to go before I do all that. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so because it is a little bit of a race against time that I get all my projects done that I've laid out for myself for the season of 2023. 
I feel as though I'm running out of time, not because the year is coming to an end just yet, but because the temperatures are changing. And ooh, I only have so much that I can do while the temperatures are ideal to hopefully strengthen my orchids and bring them through the winter of 23 and 24. So I would so appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel as well as giving this video a like that would be so, so kind. Much appreciated. Let's see if she recovers once she is in lava rock. Wouldn't that be awesome? So there were, that's a really nasty looking one, but I'm not going to peel that off. Like I said, I don't want to go not mad on this one. This root looks dead, but it's not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> not my finest moment, that's for sure. <laughs> I didn't have her in self-watering when she was in lava rock the last time. She was in one of those transparent pots that had ventilation holes on the side. I used medium-sized lava rock back then, but because this is a closed pot that she's going in with self-watering, I'm going to be using large lava rock to compensate for no ventilation holes, but hopefully to at least allow for aeration into the pot. And lots of flushing, of course. I've got my nice clean pot. I need my water. Even though I have to place the lava rock into the pot, it's still gentler with water around the roots that are existing, <laughs> even though it's not really that much to write home about. But also because I'm going to stake her I do need that water just for the time being. Whatever happens, let's see, let's put her into the pot because I want her somewhat in the middle, maybe towards the back a bit. And then I can tie her up using her oldest spike. You see, but they move. Girl, I'm already coming your way, changing your media back to what you know and what you like. So come my way just a little bit. Let's get her secured because I want her this low, just a little bit of lava rock for humidity at the bottom so that she can recover and also humidity around the base so that hopefully we get more roots coming out of the stem and also because the leaves support the orchid at the same time. Hopefully one day she will root in and then grow up and out of that media. We shall see. This orchid is very special to my daughter <clears throat> and also very special to me because she bought it for herself at a time of crisis and she was advised to get herself something that was beautiful, that was fresh, that was pleasant and peaceful to look at. I wasn't around at the time, but she remembered my orchid collection 2.0 back in the day and she bought herself this orchid. So <laughs> if I do a number on this one and lose it, yeah, she will not be well pleased. And neither will I be. I'll be mad at myself. You know how it goes though. You're thinking, oh, look at all the other ones, rock and roll and like I'm self-watering. Let's get them all into the same setup, you know, blah, blah, blah. If you're an orchid grower that has tendencies and enjoys uniformity in some way, shape or form, I don't think I need to explain much further. And there comes a time in the hobby as well to stop, reflect and say, this is not right. Just because you want it that way doesn't mean it is the way. I still have that gorgeous root tip right at the base. It's touching the microfiber, that's fine. And now I'm just gonna place lava rock into the pot and only fill up as high as the lower part of the stem. My lava rock is approximately three centimeters. That's the size I'm using, that's the largest that I have. Always keeping an eye on that root tip though. This is where I also keep thinking as orchid growers, if it were my way, this orchid would be on the highway. And I don't want that. I'm not shaking the pot. I'm just putting the lava rock in and let it fall where it may. Now this is not a how to rescue your orchid using lava rock tutorial. This is how I am hoping to bring her back from the brink of leaving the collection. Only time will tell if it works because if this orchid wants more light and more heat during the winters, I can't provide that. So at least we've eliminated the stress of evaporative cooling. 
I'm going to leave her soaking with the plain RO water for another couple of hours just because she had a massive dose of fertilizer. I don't want salt buildup around the roots. I didn't know how pathetic her root system was. Ooh, gulp, the shame. So 800 parts per million was a little heavy handed. For that reason, plain RO water, let them rinse off a little bit. Then I will drain the pot and only have the reservoir full so that the roots at the bottom have access to moisture and humidity and all that fun stuff. Then the fertilizing and supplementing regime will continue as per. Now I'm also focusing more on CalMag as we move into the colder months of the year, preparing them for low light levels and preparing them to grow strong structures at this stage of their growth habit so that I don't incur any rot. If nothing else, I hope that this video was fun to watch. I appreciate that you were here. Even more so, I appreciate the fact that you stayed to the end. It gives me the opportunity to thank you to wish you also a beautiful day, but I do attach a condition to that, that you please stay safe. And if you have any questions or you just popped in to say hi, woohoo, would love to see you in the comments. Take care, bye.